Next, I decided to start working on turning the lawnmower on wirelessly. To accomplish this, I needed to open up the lawnmower's enclosure. I soon discovered the lawnmower contained three 12 volt batteries hooked up in series for a total of 36 volts. Next, I needed to detach the switch housing from the upper handle. Next, I removed the remaining pieces on the lower handle from the lawnmower enclosure. Next, I needed to open up the switch housing to analyze how the switch accomplished turning on the lawnmower. I soon discovered the housing included two wires, a red wire and a white wire that led to the positive terminal on the battery and a green wire that led to the negative battery terminal. Next I needed to lift the lawnmower some in order to test turning on the lawnmower. I soon discovered that the switch housing contained the basic on off switch that is used to turn the lawnmower on and off. Next I began to create a method for turning on the lawnmower wirelessly, however since I end up changing this method later on in the process I will not bother to explain the electric components used in detail. Next, I needed to disconnect the connections to the switch. Next, I discovered Black & Decker placed a diode and a resistor in some white heat shrink tubing which is used when charging the lawnmower. I should also point out that it's not required that you open up the heat shrink tubing but I was just a little curious at the time about what was inside. Next I cut off the connector which I will use later on in the project. I then exposed the leads on the green wire to perform another quick lawnmower start test. I soon confirmed that when touching the black wire with the green wire started the lawnmower. Next I disconnected the batteries from one another in order to install a fuse, however I should point out that later on in the build process I end up getting rid of the fuse because it became quite hard to get to once the top of the enclosure was screwed back in place. But I will show you how I installed the fuse in case you wish to install the fuse elsewhere in the circuit or project. I used an inline ACT water resistant fuse holder and a regular fuse that you can buy from AutoZone or a local home improvement store. I also used heat shrink tubing to help secure the wires. I next placed some solder on the two connected leads to also help secure the two wires together. 
Next, I place the heat shrink to and over the wires. Next, I used a lighter to activate the shrinking of the material. For my first attempt for starting the lawnmower wirelessly involved using a solid state relay. Alright, so I just wanted to stop the video real quick to hopefully clear up any confusion surrounding the solid state relay. If you already understand how solid state relays work, you can go ahead and skip this part and get back to the video. But basically, just to explain what we have here, we have this parallax board which contains a microprocessor or a microcomputer is another way you can think of it. And then we have the solid state relay obviously and then we have this 36 volt battery source which is connected to this light bulb which i'm just using as a demonstration all right so getting back to the solid state relay it's basically an electronic switching device which contains obviously this input side and then it has an output side and for this input side it's looking for 3 to 32 volts it's looking for a control signal which in this sense is going to be sent by our parallax board of education our parallax board of education is going to send 9 volts to it which is in this range so when it sends that to this input side basically it closes the switch or you can think of this being a wire it's basically going to put this wire back together so the power a larger voltage as you can see 36 volts here a larger voltage and a larger current it's going to be able to flow now to this light source and in our case it's going to be a motor so just to put that to use when i do actually send 9 volts you can see a light comes on and this wire or our switch is now closed our wire is put back together now power can now flow to our light source so in a nutshell that's how a solid state relay works it's basically used so that i can supply a little small voltage to the input side to control a larger voltage as if i had this 36 volt battery source hooked up directly to the parallax board of education it will basically fry my microprocessor so you need this middleman you need this middle component to kind of help out with this really large voltage that you're receiving from the lawnmower so that's the reason we're using it and hopefully this makes sense so now let's just go ahead and get back to the video next i use some arctic silver 5 compound to help transfer the heat from the solid state relay to the heat sink After placing the compound on the solid state relay, I could simply screw the relay down on top of the heat sink. Next, I used a diode within the circuit that would help protect the solid state relay from reverse EMF pulses due to the motor. For testing purposes, I did not bother to permanently connect the two leads. Alright, so here's just an image of how the diode should be hooked up. As you can see, the gray end of the diode is facing the white wire. Next I began to screw the wires into the output terminals of the solid state relay. I connected the black wire to the positive terminal and the green wire to the negative terminal. Now what you see here is my first attempt that did not work out successfully so I will not bother to explain in detail what components are connected to the Parallax microprocessor. In a nutshell, the receiver sends a signal to the Parallax board which then sends a signal to the solid state relay which then turns on the lawnmower. So 
So as I flip the gear switch on the transmitter, it sends a signal to the receiver and eventually the solid state relay receives a 9 volt signal on its input terminals from the parallax board. So next I hooked up the lawnmower's battery to perform a test. This first attempt worked fine with two batteries hooked up which is 24 volts but when three batteries were hooked up which is 36 volts the solid state relay was destroyed for some unknown reason. So since my first attempt failed at turning on the lawnmower wirelessly, I decided to use a manual switch just so I could perform a yard cut test which I will show you next. So in this test I was checking several things to see if I had enough battery power to cut the yard to see if the lawnmower cut the yard at an even height and to see if it would have issues cutting the thick grass. After about 30 to 40 minutes I had cut the entire yard with the RC lawnmower and I still had battery power left over. Hello guys and ladies that does conclude this video now I just want to take a break from editing video and say a couple of things before I end this particular video if you find these videos interesting or helpful a way that you can show me that is by liking a video or leaving comments below the particular video that you found interesting or helpful or you can subscribe to my YouTube channel like my Facebook page follow me on Twitter or you can share with others that you think may find this particular video interesting so any of those things or many more will actually show me that you guys appreciate all the time and effort that I'm putting into these videos and it also boosts my motivation to spend more effort and time with trying to make these more informative and trying to get them out on YouTube and on the web a lot quicker so with that said I will see you in the next video